Hello, everyone. I am really thrilled to be talking to someone extremely special, a fellow South African. And not only is she a fellow South African, but she's also one of my NeuroCycle facilitators. She's amazing the way she's applied neurocycling in her life. And I'm just really excited that she's here today to talk to us about a very, very interesting topic. We're going to have an amazing conversation with Ilana van Deventer. Ilana, welcome. It's so good. I always love talking to you. We always have much great. We were having this whole conversation before. And maybe we should start recording because we were talking yeah. about such great things. But welcome. It's so lovely to see you again. And I'm very excited to talk about your topic that you have today. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Lee. It's always, it's always a pleasure just meeting with you and just learning through you. And I've just, you've really changed my life in so many ways in a neuro cycle, transformed my life. So I'm just so happy to be here and, and share with well, others. Well, thank you for that. And and you're an inspiration too. I mean, I look at how you've taken the neuro cycle and you've gone and done extra courses and all kinds of things to learn so much about how to help people. And You've got a, an amazing topic today. That and to tell us how you maybe tell us just very quickly in a few minutes. Tell us your backstory just very quickly. How you got to neurocycling? How you ended up being a facilitator? And then your topic for today. Yes, thank you so much. I. It's funny enough that the girl that's speaking about the mind and brain actually had a brain injury at a very young age. And for 40 years, I actually got stuck in exactly the topic that we're going to speak about today, procrastination. And I didn't really know the, the how, the application. And I felt, my, I felt stuck in the middle of between where I was and where I wanted to be. I never got the opportunity to, to study after school. I had all these limiting beliefs and then I'm not enough, I'm not capable. And I lived a very limited life for years. I call it my 40 years in the desert until the day when I walked into the training. I literally applied. I, I always say, do it even if you have to do it with your eyes closed, because that's how I applied I was like, I don't know how this is going to work out because I obviously you your life hits in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. And those thoughts were very dominant. And I had 40 years of evidence mm -hmm. of it in my life. And so I remember walking into the training, the facility, and with my knees knocking. And I remember Dr. Leaf. <laughs> you can remember this but you ask us to introduce ourselves mm -hmm. and I can remember I could literally not speak because anxiety I just struggled so oh. much with anxiety I remember as a young girl um, being asked to read in front of my peers in class and I literally could not even speak in front of people like anxiety was just fear and and just as because it was driven by the belief that I'm not capable that I'm not enough and so I've never I can honestly say that I've never finished anything in my life until I started my first neurocycle wow. and fantastic I remember you sharing this but it's so nice hearing the story again yes again building that sustainable automated habit is just really just been from there on everything just started evolving like I I managed to get to the root because the why behind that I'm not enough and funny enough I was not even aware I thought it's because of the brain injury because of all these things like all the evidence that I re received that it is true and that I'm not capable but I found the origin story and it was completely something different and I don't know if we've got time to share that but I found the origin story through NeuroCycle and I was totally unaware of it. But just to get back to us introducing ourselves, I could literally not speak. So <laughs> I don't know. And that was that was my beginning. Luckily, it's completely different now and I have completely different belief system regarding myself. And now I get invited to speak on stages and I'm like, how is this? Like, this is neuroplasticity. This is a renewal of the mind for someone that had so like 40 years of the opposite to what I see evidence of now is just, again, evidence of how this process work but I just my origin story was actually when I and I found it on day 53 such a significant day in the healing journey amazing yeah. I found it on day 53 and if I gave up before I usually would do something for 21 days so now I know we only deconstructed something we haven't even stabilized and grew a new belief but I found 
this origin story and it completely changed my entire life. And it was this deliberate neurocycle process, mind management process daily. And it was the following that I, my dad, I grew up, my dad is my hero. He's still my hero. Mm -hmm. And little girl, me, my dad used to, he was in the police force and he used to travel a lot for training. And that little girl when my dad left for six months, I took it as I'm not enough for him to stay. And I did not, I didn't know how to voice it. I didn't know what it, what was going on. I obviously, was, I knew how I'm feeling, but I made something, an assumption. I turned it into my truth. Mm-hmm. And I, when I saw it, I was like, this is not true. I know that my dad left to to create a bit of future for us financially we we were struggling and so my dad always looked for opportunities to increase our quality of living but m- that little girl didn't know that and so near a cycle when i say it changed my life it honestly changed my life entirely to where i'm today and i just love it i i love helping people to bridge the gap and and just remind them that there's so much hope and that we're not victims of our circumstances or our biology. There's so much hope for each and every one of us. Um, but it, it takes some work. Uh, you've come so far in two, in, in two years and it's been amazing. I mean, to, to you actually spoke really well that day. You hit your anxiety very well, but I'm maybe <laughs> up to me afterwards but to hear that I didn't realize that about your dad and it, isn't it amazing where our origin stories come from and we can distort that belief and it can affect us in all these ways but that's that's so interesting how you've you said some something very interesting I wanted you to just emphasize the 21 days versus the deliberate intentional process and the sustainable change but you talk a little bit about that and how that's influenced yeah. us yes I I remember growing up I never really even I'm still doing neurocycle. Like I'm, I'm entering it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, as I journey, there's always something that comes up, especially as you expand. Like we we spoke before we started recording. I'm studying currently at MIT Sloan. Like that girl, South African girl, that grew up in Springbok in Northern Cape. She would never have ever dreamed that she would be doing what she's doing now. So proud but, of you. Thank you so much. I mean, I just I am so grateful for you. But yeah, I, I didn't, the, I just recently found another breakthrough. And I want to share that because I tried so many times. I used to do track and field and I used to create a habit regarding my wellness as well. I had an eating disorder at one stage and, mm-hmm. and I, I would just give up after a little while. And I, and I carried this belief that I'm a quitter. Mm-hmm. So I would start things and I would quit. I mean, and I just last week found actually the true what's actually behind it because the why and the root is I never really fully understand how to do it. Oh, uh-huh. I didn't even know what I wanted for someone that didn't believe that she is capable or enough or knowledgeable or able like I didn't even set goals for myself and I know goals it's just like a small percentage of actually creating the habit Mm -hmm. but I didn't even knew what I wanted because I didn't know myself Mm -hmm. because I had all these beliefs that were shaping my reality yeah and so when I I'm now doing a neurocycle with some previous clients, some current clients, and and we we're just doing it all on our own, but we're supporting each other, which is so beautiful when we do it in community. It's just we are creative for community. I know you speak about it as well. It's just so healing as well in the process. Yes, but that looks like that process you know, after you finish your, this part of your story. Yes, yes. Heard you say that it obviously it takes 21 days. So every time I started something new. St- oh, went back to the old habit, started yeah. it over again. I was just deconstructing it. Mm. But I never moved over to the reconceptualizing and stabilizing this new habit that I really wanted to create. So. And that's actually my current cycle is on that because I, I know now that I didn't really know the path. I didn't, I was just cycling in that 21 and I would do it. And months later, I would try again because 
oh, here I go again. I'm a quitter and already set myself up for failure because I, I don't, I stop once. But now I know that science shows it. It takes 63 days. There's a lot of things that I didn't know, but I know now. And so it's it's just... It feels different, doesn't it? It actually feels different because we've been told it's 21 days and you know that that's not the science, correct science. And, and the people listening to me, you this research on my platform if you want to go and have a look. But to, it takes at least nine weeks, at least 63 days. And if it's a big thing you're dealing with, it will be multiple cycles. And, and as you've said, Ilana, you finish one cycle and you start another one. It, this is a lifestyle. I mean, you yeah. do it like every day, like I do it every day. And I'm in one thought working for 63 days. And then I apply it in quick ways during the course of the day. So I can use the neurocycle. I think you also do. Yes. Just before something happens or whatever, you've thrown off by being a busy, having a busy day or something. But what you said there is so, so relevant that you buy. I love how you explained it. You said that people just get stuck in maybe two weeks or three weeks. And so they just deconstruct. And then that sets up a, a revolving door instead of an evolving door. And yes. that's what you what you've seen is you've transitioned from starting again. I heard this so much when I practice and I've heard it so much and you're hearing it now with your clients and the people in that all the time. I just I keep starting and keep stopping and people even going to therapy and counseling, same thing. So it's, it sounds, so that's very key. And has that been key in your work with your clients? Cause you've worked with so many clients now over the last two years. Has that yes. been a key feature to get not just the deconstruction, but to carry on the full journey I think what really, really made the difference, and I don't know if you've you've probably seen it in, in all the feedback, what really made the difference that I've seen with my clients. And I also want to say that they don't do, it's not, we're not doing it perfectly, but we don't give up. And that is where the different come, difference comes okay. in. When you don't give up and what really helped them with that breakthrough is having someone next to them, supporting them, encouraging them and seeing them and and just being there for them ultimately, like whatever that looks like. Some days you don't need me that much and other days. So I even have my clients on WhatsApp because I know mm-hmm. I went in my journey, I just wanted to feel seen and heard. That's so good. And I want to be that for my clients. What do I you- say clients and some of them are now friends. Oh, I love that. So your WhatsApp group, is it just a group? Do they just all jump on whoever's part of your nearest, all your clients? Or is it specific? How does it work? So I I have my one-on-one clients. I just have them all in on like one-on-one. They're not in groups. But I did recently create a group and I and I actually put it on Instagram with people that that either start starting their own cycle or want to start their own cycle uh, or previous clients or current clients. And we we have this group. There's no coaching that happens in these groups. Mm-hmm. But I've seen the, the beautiful, beautiful breakthrough that happens when now they they helping each other, they encouraging each other. I don't even have to come in and say anything for days because they check in with each other and saying, done your cycle for today. And it's more just a community aspect than me having to, because the app is there to help them. The app is, is where they, they do the work, they, they get going. And that's really where the breakthrough happens when we do the work. It's, it's not talking about it, it's doing it. And so the, the community is just really where I see now like-minded individuals supporting each other, encouraging in each other, and just being on this journey. I call us the, the neurocyclers. Uh, <laughs> neurocyclers, yes. There's a forward movement yes. change. There's, a, there's something that is required for change, and it requires action. And so I also I see it as this you being on a bike. And so you have to mo- keep your feet moving in order to, for the change to happen. And so we're the neurocyclers. We're just a beautiful community that was birthed from your incredible work, and we just get to support each other. But then the the one-on-ones, my clients are individually, and if they just they that's where they plug their metacogs in daily. If there's something that we have to deconstruct a little bit, so they don't wait for seven days, then they can actually access have access to me. I do have beautiful healthy boundaries as well because I need to 
the like, same, those two, yeah. <laughs> yes. So weekends is for me, but in the week I'm available and I always want to create that space where my clients feel seen and heard and they'd not have to figure it out by themselves. That's beautiful. I love that, Ilana. That's amazing. Now we will put the details of how people can find you in the in the show notes and the links and so on. But people can find you inside the app. So inside the Neurocycle app, Ilana's profile is there, and then also at the Neurocycle um, Institute um, website and at our normal Dr. Leaf website. So you'll be able to find Ilana all over, but you can also reach out to us. Now, Ilana, and we'll put, as I said, we'll put all the links and details will be at, in the show notes. So Ilana, we you want you you did a poll. This was this was very interesting. Yes. We're now going to dive in and talk about procrastination. So, and you've yes. got a nice little power, a nice keynote that we're going to share, and we're going to move through this in about 15 to 20 minutes. But Ilana has done a fabulous job on helping us with procrastination using the neurocycle concept. So, I'm going to hand it over to you. And yes. about the poll first, and just let me know when you want me to share the screen. Yes. I So I did a poll on my Instagram and social media, and I really wanted to, we could have spoken about anything. Honestly, we could fall in some time. And, but I really always have this desire to serve people and meet themselves, meet them where they're at. And procrastination actually came as 63% of something that the majority of my community struggle with. So that's why I felt like, let's, let's start here. And I procrastinated for a long time time so this is really near and dear to my heart I would love for you to speak about the why because I can obviously share what I've the information that I've gathered gathered through you but you just go so deep so I would love for you to speak on the why if you don't absolutely we absolutely I'm just trying to see here if I'm um, the pdf I think we can yeah we can just do it like this we'll just plug through like this I'm going to try one more keep on keep on talking Lynn I'm just going to see okay, what yes I'm yeah the, let me see I like can, a bit. So procrastination is is obviously a big thing that we struggle with. I remember, here's something that I've noticed as well, years of procrastinating. There is a sense of control that we get, like a predictability like, that we get that's obviously driven by by some by our thoughts. But we we stay in this vicious cycle because there is a false sense of control in that as well. And uncertainty is obviously another big topic that we can speak about. Yeah. So it creates this predictability, but also we get stay stuck in that unless we address the root, the because, the why. Did you? Yes, I got that. So can you see okay. it? The screen is sharing. Can you see it? Yes. Yes, okay. I can. Fantastic. So I, because it's a PDF, I can't make it play like a, 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 a keynote. Can, no problem. Have you got it as a keynote? I can, yes, I can share it. And then, uh, Dr. Leaf, you can uh, start talking about the why. Don't You know what, let's leave it like this and then you okay. can go straight on. You don't have to worry about that. So no problem. All right. So you've got this first slide here and then I want to say more about this slide or should I go into the next one? Yes, you can go into the why. So I just put a couple of, of points there for, for everyone listening, but I would love for you to go deeper. I know that the reasons I've found that procrastination is not a time management issue. I remember thinking, I just don't have enough time. I just don't have enough time and I know that we will fill up time. So no matter how much time we have, we will always fill it. But it's a self-regulation problem. And if you don't mind going deeper into, into that. Sure. So just on a on a very basic level, we we whatever we think about the most will grow. So if we have built in a psycho neurobiological network, a network in our mind-brain-body connection that we like you had, Ilana, like you felt that I never complete things. So you always started, but you didn't complete. And that that is very linked to procrastination because you think, okay, well, I am not going to complete it. So therefore, I'm going to put it off for another day. Or I'm going to put it off for another moment because there's this fear attached to that I'm not going to finish it. And if I don't finish it, then there's all the negative feedback that comes in. So basically, it's a thought, it's a, it's a network pattern. It's a thought pattern that has wired in from a source. There's been some experience at some point, and then it turns into a habit. Sometimes there's no actual drama, trauma, huge thing. Sometimes it's just a pattern that we get into as a coping mechanism and we build bad habits because not everything comes from trauma. That's something we, you know, we need yes. to emphasize. Not everything comes from trauma. Um, it's, it, it can it can sometimes just be a bad habit that we've got into. We've got other things going on in our life, so we 
get in fall into these patterns. Now, the more you do it, the stronger the network becomes. And if you do it for 63 days or nine weeks where you may be not counting, but suddenly it's three months, almost three months later, and you've been doing, you know, you look back and think, geez, I'm actually been, I've been procrastinating this whole year. This is kind of my pattern. Well, then you've practiced it. It's a very dominant network. And it's going to be like where the, what the torch light is shone on, you know, that the, the highlight is there on, on that particular network. So psychologically, it can come from it can come from a, a, a level of trauma, like you explained in your case. You felt that was that your origin story was quite interesting. How, as you've been working through the neurocycle, you got to that level of that you were not good enough, and you also that seemed to be a source of if I'm not good enough, then how can I ever finish something? And then you don't finish something, and that feeds back and becomes a vicious cycle, or could have been. So there's, to find that source, the only way you're going to change the procrastination pattern is to find that source and to then deconstruct and reconstruct. So now your story doesn't go away. What what your dad did didn't go away, but look how you've reconceptualized it, how you now look at, oh, your dad was doing that because that was his best way he could make more money for us. But as a, a five-year-old or whatever, you saw that as, well, I'm not good enough. And if mm. I'm not good enough, why even try and do anything? Because whatever I do is not going to be noticed or whatever little patterns went on in your head at that stage. So you had to break that down and rebuild that. So you've, you've reached that stage of reconceptualization. So Mike, to throw back a question at you, have you found that the procrastination has changed in your life? Because I remember when you did the work with me, you, because you, when you did the training with me, you did the whole exam and we spent a lot of time together and you did a lot of writing. I remember you writing about the procrastination. And so now having used this for two years, has that changed for you? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I am super aware. I have this increased self-awareness. I even was thinking this morning as I'm driving to make a call on time, I was like aware of my my body sensations in my emotions. And I was like thinking, feeling, choosing as I'm in traffic. So I have definitely this increased awareness and I'm able to catch it quicker, but I'm also able to move forward where before I would just make it mean the end and it would just be, oh, why try? Because I'm going to get this. It's just, this is who I am. I'm stuck. I can't, I can't do it. So really what happened for me with NeuroCycle is like they say, the self-regulation -regu problem. Mm -hmm. NeuroCycle has made me super, super aware. Like I have this Spider-Man senses all the time, but I'm able to, to make sense of what my body is telling me, what my emotions is telling, what's my behavior, because obviously uh, it will show up a lot of the times in our behaviors. And I'm able to identify it. There's one thing that I actually, being uh, in the sport, rugby fans, like sport is our, our thing. Yeah. I, I say a lot, like, I've got a game plan. <laughs> so I started dividing my day into four quarters. And because what I used to do, if I didn't accomplish it in the morning, then I give up the whole day because ah. I failed. But now when I view the day as four quarters, I'm like, no, wait, I still have three more quarters to actually do it. That's and so I just carry it over. And it's just, I'm not stuck. You're not stuck there. You don't have the task aversion that you write about down here because you know you've given yourself time. Now, that is an active reach that you've created for yourself. You've created, and the active reach is step five. And that's so you've gone by doing the work of the way the origin story was and reconstructing and, and deconstructing, reconstructing and stabilizing. In that process, every day you created an active reach, but now you've got like one big final active reach that you're doing uh, to help you to not fall back into the pattern of procrastination. And so there's, there's a very key thing that's happening here is you identified a, pro, a problem in that how you were showing up. You saw what it was doing to your self-esteem and so on. And you did the work to find the, the origin story. You reconceptual, reconstructed, reconceptualized with little day, micro steps each day, the, doing the micro active reaches, you know, all the five steps ending in an active reach. And then you've got one big active reach, which is this four quarters that works every day for you. I love that. That's so yeah. beautiful. You demonstrated like the importance of us having an action plan that's realistic, because I think that's what the neurocycle helps to do is the daily little action active reach, which is step five, is going to help you. How do I get to today? But by the time you've worked through the process and identified the origin story and 
reconceptualized, you need a big picture active reach that helps keeping you moving forward so that yes. you're triggered, you're not stuck. I mean, you do, you can pull yourself back up, which is the self-regulation thing. I don't know, that's just my analysis of it. Does that sound, that. Can you add to that or correct me if I'm I wrong? That. Or? That's exactly what it is. Even I have another tool that I've picked up and now it makes sense why I have these tools. I didn't view it before like that. So thank you for sharing that. I have a timer. I used to have this funny, you know, the egg timers, old school. Yeah, I, had, <laughs> I had a strawberry, but now I have a little bit more fancy one because I there were certain areas even, and I'm going to simplify this, even down to folding washing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, It's just yeah. something that I can procrastinate. <laughs> It's just something that I procrastinate on. So I have my egg timer now and I have this 10 minute rule that I can do anything for 10 minutes. And I and I apply it with other in other areas as well with studying, with if I have to write something or I have to like whatever it is that I feel that resistance, I use my egg timer. And what usually happens is by seven minutes, eight minutes, I folded all the washing. But also in the same with my studies, by 10 minutes, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I actually, it, I don't feel that that resistance. So I actually feel good and I carry on longer. But it's just that initial start and it. making it doable. And that's what I love, your way of active reach. I, for years, I share it often, but I, I used to stand in the mirror and I used to say affirmations. But I, but I had tried to put a hundred percent active reach affirmation on a five percent belief, mm -hmm. and it was just too far fetched. It was internally there's something wrong with me because I'm lying to myself because this works for everyone else, but it doesn't work for me. And no matter how many times I say this, it's just I don't, I don't breach that gap. And I, and I often see it as we often try and do this with our minds and our, and our brain because our mind drives our brain, which I love that we have that yes. incredible mind, mind, brain, body connection. We, it's like I haven't worked out for 40 years and I go to the, to the gym and I walk in day one and I try and pick up the 150. I don't even know if you get that size <laughs> dumbbell, but I try, you try and lift that on day one and it's, it's really causing damage, but that is what we're trying to do with, with throwing a hundred percent affirmation on a belief that's only at 5%. So, so I really see my journey of, of like a staircase. I had to build it up to where I do see myself as enough now, mm -hmm. but I, I had to obviously deconstruct, reconceptualize, stabilize to where I can get to my, my core truth. But I had to start with the five, the five kilogram. And my first act of reach was, it's okay. Just that. It's yeah. okay. I'm figuring this out. And I think it's on the app as well. Yeah. That was believable. And I do see there's a lot of, of damage and trauma and, and really people being stuck because we feel like there's something wrong with me because this works for everyone else and not for me. But it's really about meeting yourself where you are at with a, with a, a deliberate mind management program where you slowly build yourself up, where you can lift it up. Because you've trained your muscle, you've strengthened it, and you slowly started building your belief to to where you want to be. I love that, Ilana. You explained that so well. You know, the, the, one of the things that I, I've said when we work together in a group with all the other certified facilitators, and I say this so often to people, is the neurocycle is the affirmations is step five. But there's four mm -hmm. steps before that. So the affirmation is going to work. You have to have done the work before. And the affirmation also has to build exactly. You described it perfectly. And what a lot of people are doing is that they awareness, it's pretty good at getting aware in a disorganized way. But people are pretty good at becoming mindful, especially with all the media and all the mindfulness. And then people are also very good at having a technique, you know, step on the affirmation, do the CBT technique. And all of those are fantastic. You need them all. But if you don't put them in the right order, and if you don't direct the neuroplasticity correctly, you don't get the change. And that's that evolving door instead of the revolving door instead of the evolving door. What you were saying before this is a key thing in procrastination. If you don't put all the steps in and you don't put the 
process in the middle. You've got to have the preparation. You've got to have the first step, second step, third step, fourth step, fifth step, and then, and then the active reach. And then also the active reach is it's micro. Today, I'm okay. Tomorrow, I think I can be okay for two days. This is amazing. Whatever. So your active reach is building like the steps. I love that. So I'm just emphasizing what you said. You, you explained it really well. I'm just kind of re-emphasizing it for people. Yes. So we, we really what helped me is also the, obviously the active reach has got two components. We, yeah. the, the people that wants to go through this and really go get into a little bit more detail, but I think you explained it so well. Um, that's just, they can go through that. We did um, put the five steps of really how to create that sustainable sustainable and lasting. This is another thing that I really missed. Yes, five steps to overcome procrastination. This is really something that I that I see as a gap. We have all these tools and you explained it. We did a, a live, I think it was an mm-hmm. Instagram live, and you explained it so well. I still hold on to this and this is how I explain it now as well as you didn't take off and you didn't land because you didn't use the engine. Mm-hmm. You didn't use your mind. Yeah. And so I... I love just just using this deliberate, like there's a beautiful structure. All of a sudden, everything feels more organized and you can make sense of what you're thinking and what you're feeling and your body. And we have all these beautiful messengers. Again, I, I struggled with depression when we immigrated from South Africa. Yeah. And I just, as a Christian, I just felt like I'm not, I'm just not believing enough. Like, I'm just not a good enough Christian. But when I done the process, well, I was first cross because we had to do it ourselves. <laughs> you made us do the process ourselves. And then it was the best gift that you could have ever given me and everyone else is to deal with our own stuff. Yeah. Because I think you could have, again, just given us the tools, like yeah. the takeoff and the landing. But we would not have gone anywhere because it would just be information and that again that missing component is creating that sustainable and lasting transformation and change that we desire is in the process of managing our minds and using the engine i love that you explain that so well so true you can't you know you can know how to, only how to prepare a plane but you don't have an engine you don't take off or you do maybe take off but you don't know how to fly and land what are you going to do beautiful you know ilana i think it's worth actually saying you know, just quickly, let's run through the slide here because you've actually yeah. put it together and it kind of summarizes everything so nicely for people. We can kind of wrap it. So I'm going to let you let you run through this and just talk. Did you want to say anything yeah. more about this? Should I go to the next yeah. slide? I think we, we, we spoke about the, the task aversion that happens and also we just, like it's the, the, the negative feeling around the task, right? Like boredom, anxiety, insecurity. I just gave a couple of examples there. It's different for each individual. We think, feel and choose all uniquely. So it looks different for everyone else. And that's another reason why I love, this is not a one size fits all. This is really where you go into your design and and your your way of thinking and your perspective, which is obviously from from all the experiences. And so it's just like so custom. It's just I just see the beautiful uniqueness in in this program where we just like tap into you. It's like I feel seen every time I do this. Like oh, she sees me. I've got so many clients that like oh, how did Doctor Leaf know? Oh, this is how I'm feeling today. <laughs> so, um, yeah. off the topic, but so to no make problem. things. Sorry, I was. No, no, that's beautiful. It's good to add the personal touch there as well. I love that. And so you explained this really nice. Thank you for doing that. You explained this nicely how how our mind, when our mind is so messy, how it can mess up uh, because our mind then puts that messiness into the the experiences coming into our mind and then it gets pretty Do you want to just explain this slide? Because you've done this really, this is really good. Simple and easy to understand. I'm going to just read it and then we can elaborate on it. But to, to make things worse, it's studies obviously indicate that we are, when we're under the stress, the rational part of the brain, and I think of me speaking that day, the prefrontal cortex shuts down and the amygdala, the part of the brain that moderates our fear response, perceive the task as a genu- genuine threat. So on that day, when I, even when I, before, when I was asked to speak, I was like, I'm going to die. I literally, like, there was no difference for me. It felt exactly the same. I'm going to die. So it's, it's, there's, there's this mind can be very dramatic, can't it? Our messy mind, <laughs> this is our non-conscious mind, which is very wise, but our messy mind is so dramatic. Yes, you got to die. And I often say to my clients, it's okay, you won't die. 
Let's, just, <laughs> let's take a moment here. Let's pause. Let's see what's really happening. What is this resistance pointing you towards? But so what happens is it's, it's a genuine threat to our self-esteem and our mental health. And this is also known as the amygdala hijack. And it's a time when we are most prone to putting off the task because our brains are more concerned about removing the threat. I just want to keep you safe. I love fear. It became, I know we, I was waiting to become fearless before I felt I can step out and do something. And now that I have an understanding of what this emotion is, it's basically, I care for you. Mm -hmm. I want to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. I just don't have evidence that we can survive this new experience or this task in front of us. I just don't have evidence that we can survive it. But then when we manage our mind and we have these tools in place and we take that, that micro steps, all of a sudden we build that evidence that, oh my goodness, I can actually survive this. I didn't die. I didn't die, which is amazing. But it's just, I care for you. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, I always say, or I often say this, the moment where I stop caring then I think I'm busy just with the to-do list. Mm. When that emotion is not present anymore, I know there's this change that happens, but when that's gone, I'm just busy with the to-do list. And I am seeking discomfort. That's that's a great idea. Yeah. That's what, yeah. what brings you to that point where you can self-regulate and jump in and self-regulate. And and you and you said beautifully there about how I just want to stress what Ilana said about the fact that your amygdala can get kind of hijacked. Now, remember, your, your brain does nothing without your mind. Your mind, your brain just does what the mind tells it to do. So, But we've got our messy mind and our wise mind, and the neurocycle is helping you to stand back and observe your messy mind, which is okay to be messy. It's it's, it's like the toddler and, and the parent, okay? So it's like the toddler. That's how you learn. It's, it's good. But the problem is if it gets stuck. And if it gets stuck doing like if, if it, it's hard to doing something that's going to hurt themselves, you've got to come, step in and, and guide. So what we're doing with the neurocycle, Alana, just in terms of this, this amygdala hijack thingy, and add to this example if I don't explain it well enough. But essentially, what you're doing is you your brain is 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 just doing what the mind tells it to do. So the messy mind is dominant in sending the message that I'm can't do this or I'm going to die. Then that's what's fed in, and that's what the what grows, and that's the network. Then that feeds back into the mind, and this vicious cycle is set up: the revolving door instead of the evolving door. So to get out of the revolving door, we have to tap into the non-conscious through the bridge of the subconscious, and that's what the, the neurocycle is helping you do. That's what self-regulation is. It's helping yes. you then. Hey, listen, you're not going to die. Exactly the beautiful word. <laughs> you're not going to die or I can get through 10 minutes or I can divide my day into quarters you know but you to, to do that you have to first get your put your, your your messy mind calm down and listening to the parents the non-conscious mind and then you can move forward in the in the five steps and get the little action of the timer or whatever the case may be yes. I just want to stress with people that it's not that your heart your amygdala is hijacking you you don't your yes. brain control you your yes. you control you but you've got to know how to recognize and that's what Ilana was saying with those signals you've got to know how to distinguish and recognize when you're stuck in the messy mind and when you do that immediately you tap into your wisdom and, and you've got it all inside of you and that's what the neurocycle is helping you to do sorry I just wanted to no, I love that thank yeah. you for elaborating on that I think my the MPA is probably my most favorite tool that I've got in my toolbox the multiple multiple do you want to explain that Yes, multiple perspective advantage is where we tap into that incredible wisdom that we have inside of us. And I, I always explain it as what advice would you give someone else? Like, I'm you, you, me, what advice would you give me? And all of a sudden we are, we disassociate ourselves from that. We distance ourselves from the emotion itself. And now we have a, a different view of, of what's in front of us. And that's just something that I carry. I, I use it for my kids. I use it for my husband. Multiple perspective advantage is my my favorite favorite. I agree with you. I love it as well. And that takes us. What I've got up on the screen is you you are basically helping people to understand the five steps of the neurocycle. And when you're doing the multiple perspective advantage, you are basically standing back and observing. So in terms of of using the neurocycle for procrastination, in the next five minutes, I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to ask you to walk through as we finish off the, this interview. Let's give them a sort of summary. Yeah of using the five steps to overcome procrastination. You've given beautiful examples already. And if you can just kind of wrap it up and I'll just flip through the through the slides. 
Yes, one of my clients have actually, and I've noticed it myself as well, and I'm going to use this example, is the time procrastination. Especially as a mom, life feels out of control. Like I feel like sometimes I I need to put my kids, have just dogs. <laughs> say that as it is i've got teens okay so please have what a work <laughs> in that stage yeah. so yeah i personally tapped into why is it that um i know i want to go to bed early i feel so good when i get up a little bit earlier before my family and i have that time to to just do my neuro cycle i call it my morning alignment i feel just so good when i create that space but then the the bedtime procrastination happened i had an awareness of it so i tapped into what what am i doing i'm procrastinating around bedtime and so emotions what am i feeling i feel like life is out of control so you when you tap into the, your your warning signals you start digging into the because the, the reason, the why you actually showing up and saying and, and behaving a certain way and what feels like your body. Your body is just, I love that we have this ability to tap into our bodies as well. Mm-hmm. It's incredible the, the answers that is, the wisdom that is available to us. But if you just take a moment to pause like even one thing that I that I've learned along the way is I used to call myself lazy. Like if you have, if I don't do something, I'm lazy. And you've spoken about it before, um, and I and I took it on, and I was like, pause for a moment and ask yourself, why does my body need rest right now? Mm. And just shifting how we this the one is so critical, and the other one is compassion, mm-hmm. and. And I see that I've been, I haven't slept well because I use my warning signals. I haven't slept well. I've had a busy day full of clients and I'm currently running on empty. We often don't let this run empty, but we do it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when we just step in and and just pause and I, I say it like this, the answers we're looking for is coming from inside the house. Exactly. It's so true. All is coming from inside the house. So, so reflect, then you just go deeper. Who, what, when, where, why? One of my favorite things to ask myself once I've done the awareness is, who told me this? Who told me this when I have a thought like lazy or whatever it is regarding procrastination? Who told me this? Where's, why? I even shifted my perspective regarding Why? When my kids ask me why, I don't see it. It doesn't trigger me anymore. I see it as an opportunity to go into the detail. I love that. That's amazing. Okay. So write. This is probably my favorite part. I must be honest. I already start writing with the awareness oh. because I'm so into it already. You can do. So even though we, we're laying it out here, this particular write step doesn't mean you only have to write here, but it's a specific way that you are writing. It's a specific thing you're doing. It's a mind storm. But you can start putting things down as you gather awareness, as it comes up, if you want to write it down, as you reflect, you can write yes. down. But at this step, specifically here, you're doing something a little bit different with the writing. Do you want to explain? Yes. So you actually provided all our clients with this tear off sheet and it works so well. I now put everything on Medicot because I've just done multiple multiple cycles. So it's just like that muscle is, is well flexed. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So but I love, sorry, yes, I love that you've given them... Uh, like they can, while they're going through the, the steps, they can start just making little notes, like bullet points. And then the writing portion is obviously where we, we tap into the, the metacog and where we start making sense out of it all. And obviously there's a, there's a process to this, but it's I use it even for my grocery lists. I'm able to go and shop without my list since I've tapped into this. Same thing. I agree. 
Let's make if I, if I make a list, I forget everything. But if I do it on a metacog, so basically what you've said here is so so good. You said that because a metacog is a way of organizing the information. So you may have made notes. You may already be using metacogs if you're in the system. But essentially, what Lana said here, she summarized it beautifully. You're just putting on paper anything that comes to mind. So you've done step one and two. It stimulated the stuff about procrastination because this is the example, but it could be anything. And you just, it's the free flow of ideas. And this is where you might be. Did you find this, Ilana? You you like putting all these ideas down, and suddenly you. You're talking about procrastination, but your shopping list comes up or what <laughs> Christmas dinner comes up. And you think, but what's that got to do with this? But it's there and it's at some point you'll see the relevance. So you just put down everything. It's a free flow of ideas. Yes. It's like a safe space. I call it my safe space. It's like when we have created this this system where our mind allow us, like it will it will try to remember to remember so you don't forget. So mm-hmm. I always see it as like all these open tabs on our computer, which obviously cause us to feel overwhelmed and burned out. But it's just you've got all these open tabs. And when as soon as you start cultivating this this habit of near of metacogging, you your mind associates the system as a trusted system so all of a sudden it can close that loop because it knows that it's safe for me that is was just like a trusted system that's lovely i love that that's a really lovely way of explaining it yeah so recheck is where you go back and you make you're trying to make more sense out of what you've written down and the patterns and the triggers and just bring it to the procrastination. So just give us a simple sentence about how yes. we check the, because at this stage you've got all those details. So give us an example of how you recheck the yes. procrastinating going to bed. Yes. So procrastinating going to bed, I'm aware that I'm control and then I'm able to see, go back and like, okay, so why do I feel like I need control? What is it? What is it that it's actually behind this? How can I, how can I start shifting and actually start like, what is the triggers? Like, identifying the triggers. Oh, this is coming from here. And you just, this is probably my favorite, besides having a different color every time I do this. I love colors. But now I can I can just see the the, the gold in what I'm thinking. And, and there's often a beautiful golden nugget that you can take from it. And you're like, oh, okay. So I'm not lazy, I'm just, I actually had a good day and where I was, so me taking a moment just to, to, again, it's just again, regarding having like beautiful boundaries for ourselves, not just for others, but for ourselves as well. So having, I call it my call time again, game plan. So I, it's okay if I want to sit and veg for five minutes, mm-hmm. but I have a call time, but I don't, when I see the triggers, and I'm actually able to edit it, it doesn't, I don't make it mean something about myself anymore. We, oh my goodness, you see you, you sit in the, in front of the TV for five minutes because you, you, it just spiral on from there. I hope that makes sense. Yes, it does. So, so for example, to bring it back, just to, to wrap up with us, because you've got to wrap up in a couple of minutes yes. here. Just to wrap up with the procrastinating sleep, you're giving yourself that five minutes just to veg, it's okay. And then you'll, and it's it's the, seeing that as something that you need as your game plan. If I've understood you, that you'll, you reconceptualize, you don't have to feel bad about that. You'll go to bed, but you just needed this time. So it's not that you're putting off going to bed. It's just that you needed this time to unwind. And now you can, that will release you to actually go to bed. I don't know. Is that, is that what you're trying yes. to say? Yes. So basically meeting yourself where you're at and instead of beating yourself up, you're able to see it as something that's actually prioritizing a little bit of self-care in your day. But before it was just you lazy, you, you're a bad mom. You see, so you don't follow through with, with your intentions. But when you, when I recheck it, I'm able to see that everything that I've actually done and just see that component as, and it, it, looks different. Sometimes it's reading instead of just sitting in front of the TV. That's just an example that we're using, but I view it differently. So you, so you're not seeing procrastination as, as you putting off going to bed because you're bad. It's, well, I just, I got a lot done today and I need this time just to unwind. So I'll go to bed in a few minutes, but this is helping me unwind. You've actually seen it differently. Yes. Okay. Change perspective. And then some active reaches. So, so instead of, to give us, an, you gave us so some of the active reaches you gave were things like you set the timer, you d- divide your day into quadrants. Give us one more uh, active reach kind of thing that you, those are big ones that you apply now, but you could have been doing those like maybe 
on a small scale, I'm going to start yes. the vitamin C into quadrants and um, start applying it. Maybe it took you three weeks to be able to learn or six weeks to learn how to actually do that, to apply your day, divide your day into quadrants. So that act of reach may have been something that took practice to actually make a reality in your life. Does that make sense? Is yes. that you want to say yes. anything about that? Did I understand you correctly in how you use the act of reach for procrastination of the, the quadrants, dividing your day into quadrants? Yes. And one thing that I, I started with as well is I'm learning. Mm. I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I I actually think in the next slide there's one tip that I also gave. And I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna be super honest. I love just sharing my own things that I felt stuck. Flossing. <laughs> I know it's like, wow, where is this going? Yeah. Flossing used to be a thing for me. I would procrastinate on flossing every night. And so I, one of the things that we spoke about the 10 minute rule and then do it first, but there's obviously pain and friction involved when we want to bring in something new and you have it. And so procrastination regarding flossing has been a thing that I really, really wanted to address. See, now I'm starting to, to, to dig into the smaller detail of how mm-hmm. I, how I show up and, and those fun things as well. And I actually started the 1st of January. You, but if you conquer flossing, then you've yeah. got something that you need to procrastinate. So it's easier to apply it then with bigger things. Like how you do one thing is how you do everything. Like I started with my bed. I've got that down. Now I've been on flossing and I actually started the 1st of January. So to remove or to reduce the pain and friction involved, I would link it to an existing habit. That's so it's an easy brushing, my teeth, yeah. brushing my teeth, I do my neurocycle and my coffee in the morning. Yeah. So I've linked it. So that's just one example. And, and I can say with all honesty, I have not skipped one day of flossing since the 1st of January. That's amazing. <laughs> that's incredible. Ilana, this has been amazing. We're going to just for everyone to know, we're going to be doing a challenge in January in 2025. And Ilana will be coming back on that challenge. We're going to be work with, we're basically going to do a 63 day challenge. We're going to come with all kinds of different things. And we'll talk more about this and dive into procrastination tips, more, all kinds of other topics as well. But Ilana, thank you for sharing sharing your wisdom today and if people want to reach out they can um, what is your instagram handle we'll, as i said we've got everything in the show notes but they can find you in the app they can find you on our web page but you also have an instagram handle that people can find you at as well yes i'm very active in my dms on instagram so i'm always there sending voice messages so you can find me at ilana v deventer fantastic that's amazing well thank you so much for sharing today then you stopped the sharing here it's been wonderful. I always love talking to you. And I learned I learned lots of things and I think everyone did as well. And thank you for the, the, the PowerPoint, the slideshow that you put together as well to help and all your wisdom. And I'm excited to talk again. And yes. Congratulations for conquering the procrastination. <laughs> and the, I'm not good enough and talking in front of people. You've done so much and all the people that you help as well. It's such a privilege just to be able to to help others to bridge the gap as well. And I'm always, always learning. I love, love just being a, a learner something that's shifted in my life as well. So I love learning from you and through you. So thank you for for everything you do. Thank you. Thanks, Ilona. Thank you.